Ladies and gentlemen, everywhere, It's a God Thing radio program is on the air. Yes, our God is a mountain mover, and you know what? He's still moving mountains every day. And the good news is, He can move your mountains too. Hi there, this is Chuck Cooper, host of It's a God Thing radio program. Thank you for joining us today. We sure are glad you're here. You're about to listen to some awesome interviews with believers in Jesus Christ who will tell you how God has revealed and proved Himself to them by moving mountains they were unable to move by themselves. They say that their stories can only be described as a God thing. Ready for a real blessing? All righty then, let's do this God thing. We are privileged and honored that Jan Reynolds of Blairsville, Georgia, has agreed to share her inspiring God thing story with us today. You see, Jan is a three-time cancer survivor. You heard that right, three-time cancer survivor, who was told by her doctor that she would die from her stage four cancer regardless of what he could do for her. But she proved that doctor wrong. Here to tell her incredible story is our friend Jan Reynolds. Well, Chuck, thank you for inviting me to do this. My story goes back to the fall of 2007. Um, I had had my normal uh, doctor checkup. Everything was fine. All my blood work was good. And then starting around November... I began having some pain in my right side, but women are used to hurting in that part of their bodies, and so I, you know, didn't think too much about it. All during the Christmas holidays, there was that nagging little feeling, and then on January the 15th, 2008, I had driven from Athens to Blairsville to take my mother to lunch for her birthday. And on the way back that day, I had to pull over to the side of the road because I was in such intense pain, I felt like I was unsafe to drive. Oh my. So I had to wait until the pain subsided. So I went back to the doctor. I knew something was wrong. So I went back to my gynecologist. More exams, more blood work, nothing. So she began a series of sending me to have a CT scan. She sent me to a a doctor where they did an endoscopy. I had a colonoscopy, nothing. Wow. But I, my pain was getting sharper and sharper. And was it constant, chronic pain? Uh, not constant, but um, several times a day, just sharp as if a knife was oh. twisting in my side. And so I called my son-in-law, who is a physician, and told him all the things. And he said, Jan, I'm going to ask if you would go to see a doctor in Atlanta. He is the CEO and the president of the Ovarian Cancer Institute at Northside Hospital. And I I would feel better if you went and had him examine you. So we made the appointment, uh, went in February, and after looking at all of my medical reports that had been done in the last month or six weeks, he just was frank. He said, ma'am, I do not know what is going on in there for sure. But if you were my wife or my sister or my mother, I would be sending you to a hospital for surgery to open you up and see what's going on. Oh my. So I had surgery on the 25th of March. They removed almost a five pound tumor and some of the omentum and um, removed the ovary and, you know, other tissue that was in that area. And Jen, and all these tests that you'd had did Nothing. not reveal that at all? Mm-mm. My there goodness. is a blood test that's called the CA125, and that is a 
test to reveal whether or not you have ovarian cancer. My blood work came back totally normal. Good gracious. So, after the surgery, came out and told the family while I was in recovery. So the next morning, he came to see me. He told me the news that I did have ovarian cancer. Well, and, Jen, how, how did you respond to that? Well, I did not cry. I looked at him and I said, well, Dr. Benigno, I may have cancer, but I can give you my assurance. Cancer will never have me. Whoa. And so he said, that a girl, you fight, you fight. And so that began my journey. When within two weeks, I was back in the hospital. I had a port inserted in my chest and I had a second port inserted in my abdomen. And so I would take uh, chemo for two days. One day they would give me two kinds of chemo in the chest. And then the next day, I would take one type of chemo into the abdomen. Jen, was that difficult? Very. But, you know, it, it was it was my only way, medically speaking, sure. to do buy what you time. Have to do. Yeah. So, I tried not to focus on that. I tried to, you know, focus on other things. The hardest part for me the first time was losing my hair. Because, you know, a woman's hair is so important to her. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and so the the man that did my hair, we were already really good friends. I told him my hair was beginning to fall out. And he said, Jan, you come at 5 o'clock when I close the shop. I will close all the um, blinds. And you come and it'll just be you and me. So I went in and he buzzed my head. So I was completely bald. And we just sat there and cried together. And he put my wig on and styled it. And so when I got home, the first thing I, I didn't want my husband to see me. And the first thing I did was look in the mirror and just cry. But then, um, I usually handle bad things with humor. Right. So I started singing, I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> <laughs> I live in a garbage can. I like to go swimming with bald-headed women. I'm Popeye oh my the God. Sailor Man. And you started eating spinach? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it just, um, you know, that's just the way I deal with bad things. It's, mm -hmm. it's just to find humor in it. But... Naturally, as most people, especially Christians, in times of trouble, they turn to the book of Psalms. So many, many Psalms I read during those first few days um, after chemo. And one is, you know, what time I am afraid I will trust in thee. Right. But the scripture that um, came to me, it was given to me by my daughter-in-law. And in fact, she gave me this um, Bible cover. Oh, wow. And it's Romans 12, 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. So I took 13 months of chemo. But during that time I was on chemo, I ended up having a what's called a chemo spell. A nurse did not follow directions when she was inserting the needle in my abdomen. And so I ended up having a burn inside oh of the chemo burned me. So I had to stop taking chemo um, to the abdomen. And that was very, very painful. But when I was in the hospital and they were taking me to surgery, my husband and I were a part of the Gideon ministry, and I had taken a whole bag full of testaments with me to share with nurses. So every nurse, every technician, uh, the housekeepers, everyone uh, before I went into surgery received a copy of God's Word and a Word of Witness. And then as I was going down the hall to the surgical suite, 
I had testaments under the blanket. <laughs> and Good so I you. was just handing them out. I didn't have time for a word of witness, right. but I was just handing them out to everyone I saw in the hallway. And then I reached and reached, and I kept trying to find. I had one testament left, and I shared um, that testament with my anesthesiologist and asked if he, if he knew Jesus. And he's, um, he, you know, he was busy getting ready to put me to sleep. And um, he, he just really didn't want to listen. He said, why are you asking me this? And I said, well, since you're putting me to sleep, I want you to wake me up. And I would feel more comfortable if I knew you were saved. Well, anyway, he took the testament, and whether he ever read it, I do not know, but that's, that's not important. Right. I, I was faithful to give the testament. But all during that time, um, I would pray for my doctors and my nurses, and so many people uh, just were so kind and so good to me in the hospital. But as I would go to that chemo lab, one thing I learned was uh, as I was sitting there taking chemo, I would watch and different patients would come in and you could see right on their face as soon as they walked through that door, the ones who had hope and the ones who had no hope. Oh, wow. It was that evident on their faces. And so those that would come in so downtrodden, I would try some way to make eye contact with them sure. and uh, give them a testament. All during that uh, 13 months that from surgery through chemo, I tried to give away as many testaments as I could. Um, gave about 40 during the time I was in the hospital and then uh, to the patients and all, probably another 20 to 30 more. My goodness. So, uh, just a wonderful time of witness that I could uh, share with other people. And the chemo nurses told me during that time, um, they would say, Mrs. Reynolds, you're going to be a survivor because you don't think about what you're going through. You tried to... Um, you know, laugh and joke and and enjoy, you know, what time you have and you're always reaching out to other people. So we feel sure with your attitude you're going to be a survivor. Well, that was encouraging. Very much so. Well, but, but Jan, that's you. Well, That's the Jan you. I know. <laughs> well, you know, it was constant. Every three months I had to have scans and... So, more opportunities to give testaments, and then during a routine scan in the fall of 2011, um, it was revealed that uh, cancer was back. And Was that disheartening? Um, I guess just shocking, you know. I just thought, you know, the nurses had been so encouraging, you know, and here I go again. But, um, did, did you hang on what they said? Did you yeah, dwell I on did. what they said? Yes, that yeah. I would be a survivor. Sure. So, um, but I continued, you know, reading scripture and, you know, I would believe what God said and, you know, if I lived, I lived and if right. I died, it was still gain, <laughs> you know. Right. So, um, in October of 2011, my mother died. And so, a couple of weeks after she passed, I was diagnosed with cancer you know, the oh, second man. time. And this time, it was on my spleen and on, on the bowel. And so, they removed the spleen and about two feet of the bowel. And um, I began chemo again. I took it for 12 months that time. So we're already over two years worth wow, of chemo. My gosh. And during the time I um, took chemo, about two or three months into um, the journey with chemo, I woke up one morning and it was as if I had a crick in my neck. But then when I looked 
in the mirror I was very swollen and it just so happened I had to go for chemo that day so I mentioned it to the nurse well the next thing I know I'm down in the emergency room at the hospital and they did all kinds of tests and all and my lungs had filled up with clots and I had a, a big clot in the carotid my goodness cancer thickens your blood mm -hmm. and um, so that's where the clots came from so but it turned out to be a blessing because I was sent to a hematologist and the hematologist um, is an Indian um, Hindu I guess and um, just very arrogant very proud and he just didn't know how to handle me and my smiles and <laughs> and you know my word of witness um, but during that time we we would talk and I would share scripture with him uh, so he he became less angry and less um, ugly mm -hmm. to me he and Dr. Benigno my oncologist were good friends and so they got me into a clinical trial after I finished oh, chemo wow. so I did a camp, uh, clinical trial they were hoping that um, they would be able to find a vaccine um, for women for ovarian cancer. Well, I was in the clinical trial for 11 months. My gosh. <laughs> and uh, so I would take this drug. I don't know which group I was in, if I was actually taking the drug or a placebo or right. something else. but. Anyway, uh, in the 11th month of the 12th that I was to do this, during a routine scan, they realized that the cancer was back. I had a tumor on a lymph node behind my heart. So my it was so in this is the third time? Third time. My goodness, Jan. So my doctor told me it was inoperable and I would have to take a very, very harsh chemo. And so the chemo, um, well, all the, the chemo nurses called it the red devil. And Ooh. it turned out to be the red devil because my mouth was covered in ulcers inside all of my gums. Jen, did you ever think about giving up? No. No? No. No, I, I didn't choose to do that. But before, we were trying to decide if I was going to take this harsh harsh chemo that would make my hands and feet blister that my nails might pop off uh, you know none of the um, side effects sounded very inviting <laughs> <I bet. laughs> and so we kind of had a little family powwow with um, my children and my husband and I and my husband said well you're just going to have to die because I can't take this anymore. Because he can't take it anymore. He could not well, take it Well, that was encouraging. Anymore. Yes, very much so. So, um, anyway, um, my daughter looked at him and she said, you know what? You don't get a boat. If my mom thinks she can go through this and she can buy, even if it's six weeks to six months, you let her do it. Wow, good for so, her. So, anyway, that's what we did. So, his calloused feeling about it, that it was all on him, made me realize, I'm going to fight just to show him I will <laughs> live. Absolutely, <laughs> you know? good for you. So, um... So, what he, what he meant uh, for himself was actually a catalyst for you... Yes. Uh, ...to fight even stronger. So, uh, I had a hematology appointment, and remember I had told you the hematologist was a very arrogant young man. Right. So, I asked the hematologist what would he do if I were his mother, and he just looked at me and he said, look, you have stage 4 ovarian cancer, you're going to die no matter what we do. Oh, my. Oh, that made me so mad. <laughs> And so I just looked at him and I said, 
you know, you're right. I am going to die one day, but so are you. Now, I'm going to die with a smile on my face because I know where I'm going. But do you know where you're going? Good for you. Well, from that moment on, that man has treated me as if I was his mother. Oh, praise he, the Lord. Uh, he's never made a profession that I'm aware of, but he very much um, listens sure. when I witness Good. to him. Good. So we, we have developed quite the friendship. But you know, Chuck, through all of this, I came to realize we all have a birth date and we all have a death date. And that was planned for us before the beginning of time. Correct. And so, you know, if I had been offered chemo, I mean, uh, offered uh, cancer as the way I would choose to die, I never would have chosen it. Of course not. But, um, but we don't know what God has in store for us. And then I started thinking about, I never would have met all these medical people and all these other cancer patients had I not had cancer. That's true. So, you know, I had been able, and I probably by now have given well over 100, 150 testaments, you know, to people. Um, and I never would have had that opportunity had I not had cancer. So I've never had any resentment towards God. Mm -hmm. But um, but going back to the birth date and the death date, those are important dates for us and our family. But there's a dash in between those two dates. And how we live the dash of our life is up to us. So true. We can be filled with hatred and we can be filled with bitterness and anger or we can just, you know, accept that it's God's will for our life and live with joy and hope and love. So that is, um, that's the way I've tried to go about cancer. Um, and then too, I considered the fact what memories do I want to leave with my children oh, wow. or good my ones. grandchildren? Good ones. Uh, I want to leave good memories that, you know, I fought a, a battle. And, you know, through God's grace, the victory will be mine. Sure. And um, I, I don't want them to ever say, well, oh, I remember, you know, Nana just... Uh, complaining and you know all, all right. of this so I, I, I want to live um, for Christ victoriously but only God can um, can supply that strength that you have um, during those times um, I have some scriptures that meant a lot to me during the time I was on cancer and if if I opened my Bible here you could see that I marked those scriptures like um, it would be marked like Psalms 18 1 through 3 at 2 o'clock in the morning oh my gosh and Psalm 22 yeah you've kept the journal of all that uh -huh. that's remarkable yeah and so now, why um, did why did you elect to do that just to be reminded? Yes, um, so that I could look back and see how far God has brought me through all of this. And um, one of these days, I might get around to writing a book. <laughs> to, you got two or three of them you could write. <laughs> yeah, I really could. Um, we can't say that God's ever given me a uh, boring life, <laughs> can we? <laughs> but these scriptures um, have meant a lot to me and it's Psalm 62 verse 8 trust in God at all times pour your heart out to him for God is our refuge amen it sure is well Jan how are you doing now well I had scans done this past April 
and they have three places that they continue to watch, mm -hmm. you know, um, that they're spots of cancer, but um, they just have not decided to get active and, and grow. They, they are remaining stable in size. Um, statistically speaking, I will, they will come back. Mm -hmm. They will grow at some point and I will have another battle with cancer or, you know, it will be, um, my death would probably be something as a side effect of the cancer, you know, like your liver or something of that regard. Jen, you have, uh, you have a remarkable attitude and, and hearing, hearing this, the details of what you've been through, you have decided to be joyful because of what Christ has done for you. Yes. I, I'm not sure how to ask this question, but I'm going to fumble, maybe. Jan, do you think that the fact that God allowed your body to be eaten up with this, with this cancer, this terrible cancer, and allowed you to go through the excruciating pain uh, that you've experienced that through all that that he has given you a ministry a personal ministry to try to be an encouragement to folk other folks that are suffering like you are and to and to use your ministry and to use the fact that the doctors and nurses are going to listen to you when you hand them <laughs> when you hand them a scripture and when you testify mm -hmm. about about God and asking them if they know Jesus and and your anesthesiologist he didn't like that very well not particularly yes, i don't think <laughs> that's right but do you believe that that god has given you a really really good uh opportunity to witness for him through your cancer yes and i think that's why i can say that i've never been bitter or resentful for having cancer because you know our our, our bodies um they're going to wear down or, or we're going to have a disease of one time, uh, one type or another at some time in our life. But um, I, I think that God chose me, you know, who sure. am I? I don't know why I lived and other people did not. Neither did Moses. Uh-uh. <laughs> and I don't know why he... Um, he chose the particular people that he put in my path. I don't, I don't have any idea about that, but I don't have to know. No, you don't. Uh, it, that's not important. But what's important, in the first chapter of Second Corinthians, and I think it's like verse 2 or 3, um, it talks about the, the pain and the affliction and the trouble that we go through in life, that we are to share that with others as a... Um, tool for strengthening them. So to answer your question, yes, I think God has used this, and I, I don't, I don't want the the attention to be on me. I want the attention to be on, you know, what God has done. But Jan, <clears throat> that's you, and and that's the Jan that all of us know and, and love. And Jan, your your attitude, of those that are around you that see you, and not, and that know some of the details about what you've been through, the smile, the big smile, you have a gorgeous smile, and the smile on your face is almost constant, and you have been a witness to people without even talking to us, without even trying to share your testimony, to because we see you, we see how you've handled this. And boy, that gives us the opportunity to say, okay, gosh, Jan went through all that, and I, I'm not, I don't have cancer, but I got some other issues going on. And, and her attitude has brought her through this, and her attitude has brought glory to God, and that's what we're here to do anyway. So we can use your example as a catalyst for giving glory to God like we're supposed to, and gives us an idea about how we're supposed to handle the trials that we face, too. Mm -hmm. You know, the day that I had surgery the first time, 
there was a lady who had surgery that same day. I mean, I remember seeing her in right. recovery. And we ended up um, having the, kind of the same schedule for chemo. And she, when she would come into the chemo room, there was never a smile on her face. Um, she refused to eat. She refused to even, you know, try to get up to go to the restroom by herself or just to walk around and pull your chemo bowl with you. She refused to do any of that. And so, um, as I said, when you don't have hope, you know, what do you it's have? Over. It's over when you don't have hope. So, consequently, she died within six months after... Oh, um, man after we began our cancer journey at the same time. And see, this coming March, I will be celebrating 10 years. Well, praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. And doctors don't give you that much time no, with stage don't. four. No, they don't. No, they don't. So, you're feeling okay now? Are you in pain, Jan? No. No pain at all? No. Wow, but you... But you're so accustomed to pain, you might not recognize it. Well, like that's we true. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true within itself. But you know, once you've been split in half from surgeries well, two or true. three times, you know, pain's relevant. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. Well, Jan, thank you so much for your willingness to share with us. Uh, you have already been an example to everybody that that you know and that knows you or knows about you. Your testimony is going to go all over the world now. Well, when I was a little girl, my mother used to say, you are the most strong-willed human I have ever met. And I've thought about that many times. Without being strong-willed, you know, I would not have survived all of this. Well, that's so. true. That's true. But you were strong-willed because you knew God, and you knew what He would do and what mm -hmm. He could do, and and it was His purpose, not yours. Yes. So, well, Jen, i got one final question for you. Uh, and all this with the chemo and everything and now 10 years cancer free would you conclude that everything that's happened to you the personal ministry that you've been given is a God thing it is a God thing from the get up Jan thank you so much we love you in the Lord uh, thank you wow what a great half hour this has been tune in next time for more great god thing stories and tell all your friends to tune in too oh yeah one more thing if you or someone you know has a verifiable story which needs to be told please email a brief summary to us at my story at it's a god thing radio.com that's my story all one word at it's a god thing radio.com see you next time hey,